You've got it tuned to listener-supported independent music radio, WNRN. I'm Desiree Moses, joined by a group of WNRN members live at In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. We're hanging out with Dylan LeBlanc. Dylan, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. The new album is Coyote, just released the expanded edition. We're going to chat all about that, but we'd love it if you kick it off with a song for us. Absolutely. Dylan LeBlanc live on WNRN from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. Coyote, the title track to the latest record. So, Dylan, this record is semi-autobiographical, follows the character of Coyote. Can you sort of give us a synopsis of the story of the record and tell us why it was important to you to make a narrative album like this? Well, I was just, I love, you know, um, to tell stories and... um, 
I've always been a bit of a, even as a kid, I would, you know, embellish everything. My mom would always say, and, and I remember when I was writing this record, um, you know, I thought it would be interesting to tell some of, or include some of my story, but not through my own eyes and through the eyes of like a character. You know what I mean? And um, and so I just started writing songs um, through that narrative, you know, that sort of is like the inner workings of, you know, uh, uh, or the inner thoughts and feelings of like a criminal of, of what they would think, you know? Um, and that they're just kind of people too, you know, with feelings as well. And um, so that's sort of where I started with it. And um, that's, ba- that's basically it. Yeah. yeah, so you recorded this record at the Legendary Fame Studios in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, down where you grew up. Um, I want to back up a little bit. So for those who don't know, your father is a songwriter, session songwriter for the studio. So mm-hmm. I'm curious what your relationship with the studio was growing up. Did you visit him there often? Or did you have a familiarity with the studio before you went in to record your own thing? Yeah, I mean, I grew up there. He's, he's sitting right here. There he is. Whoa. He's actually in the band. Uh, he's, he, he had a lot to do with making this record and recording this record. Right. We did it well, you together. Know can, you, can you go ahead and introduce everybody that's Yeah, absolutely. This is Dave Given on drums from Louisville, Kentucky. And James, James LeBlanc um, from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And uh, Ian Clinn from Atlanta, Georgia on the keyboards. And Clay Houle on the guitar from Atlanta as well. And uh, yeah, so when I, when I was growing up, you know, he had a job as a staff songwriter and he'd play on a lot of the demos that he would write. And uh, he's done a lot of playing on other people's records. And so when I would... I moved there in 2001, January. We did uh, together. And, um, and so I was constantly in the studio. He was working late nights. And so I would hang in the lobby and uh, when I would get out from school and a lot of cool session players would come in. And, you know, when I was young, I didn't know who they were. But, you know, then I got older and started really getting into classic music that was recorded there and starting to meet the people who would come in, like Dan Penn, uh, Spooner, Oldham, um, you know, Rick Hall was always around. And I was really close with the Hall family. They were kind of like my only family there, and I spent a great deal of time with the Hall family. And they were very kind to me, and I always really uh, appreciated them. And, um, and so when I got started, I would um, stay late there and record songs, You know, after everybody had left, I didn't tell Rick. I just went in there with the engineer, kind of sneaky, you know what I mean? And uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, when it came time to make my first album, I had to spill the beans that I'd been sneaking studio time. And uh, but they were really sweet about it, and um, they were really cool, you know. And they really encouraged me to do it, you know, and take it seriously. It was a really cool education, and the intensity of people in music in that town and how important writing is in that town it's a very big songwriter town and so it was constantly drilled into my head that that was the start of everything if you didn't have a song uh that the song is the foundation for everything you know and so to all your favorite artists they were great songwriters before they were anything else so that was something that was unique and it was i was watching people doing it day in and day out and I thought that was really cool. It just showed me that it was possible to be creative and have a job doing it. So I was lucky in that way. Dylan LeBlanc live on WNRN from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. We'd love to hear another song from you. Absolutely. This is a song called Closing In.
closing in Dylan LeBlanc live on WNRN from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. The new record is Coyote. Now, Dylan, I read that you said that this is the record you've, quote, always wanted to make. Can you expand on that for us? How so? Well, it was the first time I had the money to <laughs> do that. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of records, there's a lot of politics involved when you're working with labels and there's managers and there's um, people you got to go through and it's just a pain in the neck sometimes. And with this record, I remember I was, I had all these songs that I had written and collected and I've been waiting to make this record for since the pandemic because I didn't want to make a record during the pandemic and not be able to tour it. And and so um, John Salter, who is the um, the head of our label ATO, I remember, you know, we were supposed to work with a producer who's a great producer, um, but, you know, a lot of the budget goes toward that, working with these great producers. And I was just thinking, you know, I could produce this record, you know? I want to give me a shot. And um, and I had done a covers EP pastimes previously to that. And so I called John and I just said, it, it was taking a long time to get the deal worked out with these people. And, it was really important for me to make a record that I could get out last year because I was just broke and um, needed some cash and needed to get some more content out there, you know, and needed fuel to start working again. And so I called John and I said, let me do this. I said, give me the budget, you know. Matter of fact, I'll keep it under the budget, you know, and I'll hire great players from Nashville who are incredible and I'll turn around a great record for you and just give me a chance. And he said, oh. and then he, he said, let me call you back in an hour. <laughs> and then I, an hour came by and he called me back. He said, all right, man, all right. He said, I'm going to let you do this. Uh, you better deliver. Um, and I said, okay. And then I got the chills because I was like, oh, my God, what have I got myself into? But, <laughs> what have I done? Um, but it, I think we did. I think we delivered. I really believe in this record. And uh so, and that's why it was so fun to make, you know. I got to hire great musicians. I got to record as many songs as I wanted to within the time frame that we had. Um, I got to be as creative as I wanted to be. Because time is off, obviously money in the studio, and it's expensive. And so, you know, to have that amount of time to really think through the songs and to play them and, uh, and work on them and just get the product we were looking for, it was awesome. And then just being able to have incredible musicians in the studio is amazing too makes the workflow a lot faster and uh, everything's easier so it was just a really easy record to make and a really fun record to make and so that's what I meant by that it was just really fun and so just last week you released the expanded edition of Coyote so we have yeah. um, and included four previously unreleased studio tracks from the sessions and I think five or so live, live. cuts too. Yep. Uh, one of the previously unreleased songs, Let It Rain, we're spinning on WNR and we've been enjoying that. Oh, thank so you. can you tell us what the decision was initially to not include those on the record? What about them didn't fit the narrative? And then what made you revisit the cutting room floor and say, hey, I'm bringing these back out? Well, it was really not a matter of like the narrative or anything like that. It was just more about what I was able to get by with at the time. And I think at first, you know, production of like actual records, it was going to be a double album. And so I had to condense it down to um, just a single album, just so it wasn't so expensive to actually make the records. And, um, you know, I've been working for a long time and I'm still very you know, low on the totem pole of people. I've been trying so hard to get people to pay attention and try to get grow my fan base. So not to throw ATO under the bus, but, you know, I haven't made them an exorbitant amount of money. So they were like, you yeah, we're not going to do a double album, dude. You know, so <laughs> so then I kind of, I kinda, you know, talked them into putting them out all out on the DSPs, which is the digital uh, streaming platforms. So it won't be on a physical copy, but people can enjoy all the songs on the digital streaming platform, which is great. And it was really awesome of them to let me do that because I just want to get these songs out into the world. And I really don't care how that happens. I just want to put them out there so people can listen and discover it. And I just think these songs are they are all different enough that they can appeal to so many different kinds of people. Um, I think there's something for everyone on that record, you know, so... And I just like writing songs. You know, people ask me what kind of 
artist are you? What would your genre be? And I always just say singer, songwriter, just because I just love writing music. And I don't really care what that genre is. I mean, I'm not going to write a metal song because I don't really like metal music, but, but I just like writing songs, you know? I do actually like metal music. That's not true. <laughs> So an album of firsts for you for self-producing, and I also heard it was your first record you released since becoming a father. So I'm curious yeah. how parenthood has you know, changed your outlook on life or maybe songwriting. Well, certainly now it's more important to make some money, uh, that's for sure. But other than that, you know, I think it's, you know, art, artistry is a self-indulgent way of life just by the nature of it. You know, um, when you're trying to sell yourself to people, um, you're constantly thinking about you, you know? So I think having a child has been really good for me because it forces you to step out of yourself. If you're any kind of person at all, you want to take care of your child, you know? And so that becomes more important than you, um, or it has for me. And um, so that's been good for me uh, as far as just getting out of myself and, and being more of a selfless person, you know? So that for that, and it's changed everything. It's like, now it's like, a little bit scarier, but also more rewarding, you know, so. Dylan LeBlanc live on WNRN from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. The new album is Coyote. We love if y'all take us out with one more. Absolutely. The song's called Dust. Imagine.
Thank you. Dylan LeBlanc live on WNRN from In Your Ear Studios in Richmond. The new album is Coyote. Thank y'all for being here. Thank you. Thanks to Liz and Jess from WNRN. Thanks to Billy and Charlie on cameras. Thanks to the whole crew at In Your Ear Studios. Carlos, Andrea, Paul for WNRN. I'm Desiree Moses.